Hi everyone and welcome to The Aussie Show, Season 2, Episode 5. I'm Truthman and I'm here from uh, Montreal. To this show is entirely dedicated to the latest overclocking news and competitions worldwide. Uh, we do have a few guests today on Twitch. I have the first co-guest that is Timote Xiala. Uh, hi Timote. Hey Truthman, how's it going? Going great, doing great. Uh, I know it's the morning for you, it's the evening for us. Uh, we know we do have some people from Spain on the live chat. Uh, so yeah, it's truly worldwide podcast tonight. Um, our special guest tonight is uh, Denis Garcia. He's the editor and the voice of the podcast and in uh, Outer Asylum. Hi Denis, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on again. Um, I know that some of uh, some of the viewers know you already, but uh, you've been um, uh, one of the guests for quite some time here at the uh, at the OC show and some of the uh, previous overclocking TV podcast. Uh, can you just present yourself a little bit more and uh, why I did introduce you as the voice of the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> right. So as he mentioned, I'm Dennis Garcia, editor in chief of Hardware Asylum. I have a bi-weekly podcast called the uh, Hardware Asylum podcast amply named. Um, we talk about a lot of high-end overclocking hardware stuff, you know, reviews that are happening on the website and kind of an ongoing gaming section, which we uh, talk about what we've been playing. So we get into different games like uh, lately it's been Dying Light and some of the Borderlands 2 mods. And although good to mention that sometimes you also stream some of these games on your own Twitch channel, right? Yeah, sometimes. Um, it's kind of whenever the internet gods are uh, shining down. So, so <laughs> if any viewers want to see uh, these guys, the news guys here playing, it's uh, twitch.tv forward slash uh, Asylum or Redmax. Which one do you use the most? Uh, Redmax. And it's Redmax with an underscore at the end. Underscore at the end. Perfect. Yep. Well, Someone took it already, the other one. <laughs> yeah, somebody took the other one. <laughs> I need to go after that guy. Good. So we have a, a lot of uh, topics today. There's a lot of things going on in the uh, overclocking community uh, lately, actually in the past two weeks uh, uh, since our last uh, OC show. Um, before we go to the topics, we would like to thank some of the guys that are actually watching us from all around the world on the live chat. Uh, Timothy, yeah, do you have a few actually, names? Yeah, of course. Uh, so there's some guys from the US, of course, you have Tepanzi. Uh, you have also from Indonesia, even Colus, and I saw even one guy that was from Spain. Let me find his name. Oh, yeah, 360 Nat. So also, yeah, this guy is also one of the very, very regulars of the show and of our stream. So thanks a lot, guys, for joining in. And uh, feel free to share the love anytime you want, you know, and we are really happy to have you on board for the show. Uh, today's topic, are the uh, first one is the HWBot World Tour 2015 Europe editions. Uh, we had, the, we had the, the North America one a few weeks ago. The, the next one is going to be Europe and we're going to be talking about that a bit more in detail with uh, Timothy, that is uh, part of the organization. Uh, second topic is going to be the ASUS ROG, campaign, uh, ROG camp in Germany and, uh, with our friend from PC Games Hardware and their Bauer. Uh, we are going to be talking about the new overclocking competition at the same time and although the states of the translation at HWBot uh, higher, there's uh, quite, a, quite a few new uh, languages that, uh, yeah, that are ready now. A lot of progress on that side, so it's going to be an interesting share, I suppose, <laughs> for those of you that speak something else than English. <laughs> um, Timote, I didn't introduce you because you are a part of the Overclocking TV crew. Um, but just for people to know, you are also uh, helping out for HWBot. So that's why you can uh, also make sure that we have a lot of information from uh, like the, the, the league itself. So HWBot is like the, the website for the league. And then we can have all the information regarding about that. Yeah, I happen to work uh, part-time at HWBot as well. So this gives me access to some insider information on some of the stuff, not necessarily everything, but, you know, like, so the, the translation thing is, that's one of the projects I'm working on, on the side of the world tour, so, yeah, cool stuff. Let's switch to the first topic. Bef before that, we're going to watch the trailer, because I actually really like the music in that one. <laughs> What 
Welcome back everyone, we're seeing uh, The OC Show Season 2 Episode 5 right now on Twitch. Thank you guys for watching at this time, we know that uh, it uh, could be difficult for uh, some of you living in Europe because that's the middle of the night right now. We do appreciate, uh, well, uh, thank you to the guys in North and South America watching us. I know there is uh, Gniadol uh, from Brazil that is uh, here on the live chat and uh, thank you to the guys in the other side of the world, Indonesia. Uh, that's really appreciated for you guys to be here. Uh, don't forget, ask any questions uh, regarding the competitions going on uh, at, and the different topic we have uh, tonight. And we're going to answer that uh, during the show or right after. First topic, actually about World Tour Europe editions. Um, what is it? Uh, what is different from the, uh, from, the, from the previous one? And for the people that didn't follow what was going on in North America, Timote? Oh, yeah, so... Um... As you know, we did a, we did an event in North America uh, last uh, well two weeks ago now, and um, so that one was um, was hosted at the LAN ETS, which is the Canada's largest LAN party, and it was taking place in uh, Montreal, so actually two blocks away from your home, Truffman. And um, so we had a great time there, uh, hosting a, a gathering for overclockers uh, from Canada and the U.S. that uh, could uh, come by and attend the event. So basically, just bench all together for three days and have a, a huge amount of LN2 provided. And we also had uh, their workshop for people that have actually no clue about what overclocking is, and uh, for them to to learn uh, how to do overclocking. You know the very basics of where to start. Um, is it safe? Not safe? And why is it actually super safe nowadays to, to do overclocking on a regular basis, just for fun or at the extreme level even? And then uh, we also hosted competitions for both the gathering guys that were doing LN2 and both the also the um, the air the guys on air cooling from the workshop. So. What's going to happen at the Europe one is very similar to that. So we did it for North America, but we couldn't go without doing it for Europe, which is the second largest community of overclockers in the world. So this event in Europe is going to be hosted at France's largest LAN party, the Gamers Assembly, and that's in the city of Poitiers in France. So that's on the, the west. I would not say southwest because I'm going to probably insult the guys that are more south, but, you know, on the west side of France. Uh, good to mention that it's although the biggest land party in France, and it's although something special for uh, for you and me as uh, we did kind of create OCTV back there at this special location a few years in the few years back. Yeah, good seven years actually. It's a it's a land party that is used to see overclocking uh, since over ten years already. So um, the organizers were very welcoming when we pitched the idea of hey, we would like to host a. Europe stop uh, at your at your land party. Are you okay with that? And they say, yeah, sure, guys. Just tell us how many seats you want, how many, how much floor space, and we're gonna work something out together. And we worked something out that is going to be pretty cool. I think right now there's over 21, maybe 22 or 23 overclockers that are going to attend it. Uh, that's the guys that are going to bench LN2. And that's without counting the 2,000 gamers that are actually sitting right around us. So it's gonna be pretty epic and very intensive on both the workshop part but also the overclocking part and uh, it's always as a matter of fact we did spend some time in this uh, very event in the past and that was always awesome and so far the LAN ETS was holy shit and the gamers assembly gonna be oh my god I think <laughs> yeah it's gonna be epic so what's new about the uh, world series in Europe uh, what kind of partners do we have at this time yeah, so we announced the partners earlier last week, I think around Thursday, because um, we were waiting for um, quite a bit of time so that to get the last confirmations and all the right logos. You know, sometimes it's hard to get .ai files for logos and things like this. So uh, we have uh, Cockatlan, which is the, our main partner for the event. So uh, I like uh, Overclock.net and uh, for the North American event, Cockatlan is a very large community of uh, hardware fans and enthusiasts and overclockers in France. It's the second uh, biggest and largest overclocking team uh, in both size and ranking position. Um, it's also a tech news website, so they write reviews, they write about all sorts of stuff, mainly hardware related, and this is very important because uh, there's less and less sites that do um, just hardware news, you know, a lot of the sites are more going into the lifestyle things, so doing smartphones, wearables, uh, home automation technologies, uh, even, I don't know, drones and all that kind of stuff that is not necessarily related to hardware, uh, PC hardware anymore. So a very big PC hardware community, 
Um, so that's for Coquitlan. And then we have, uh, of course, uh, Dimatech, which is a partner of the whole World Tour uh, Series 2015. So they, um, Dimatech is a manufacturer of bench table from Italy. Very great bench tables, actually. Um, we are using the bench tables for the workshops and all those events, and they also come as prices for the competition. So pretty cool stuff if you're interested to win one. And then also as other partner of the game of assembly, we have of course overclocking TV, which is going to help out for the stream and provide all the, the content for people that cannot get there to, to tune in and see what's what's going on. And um, yeah, I think I didn't miss anyone else. And uh, yes. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you, thank you, Timothée. So, Coquitlan, Dimastek, Overclocking TV, that's going to be live all the weekend long. Um, I think, Denise, you won't be able to attend this one because that's on the other side of, uh, of the hearse for you. Of the world. Uh, <laughs> of the world, pretty yeah. much. Pretty much. <laughs> and um, I think I'm pretty sure you're going to be watching the, the live stream, uh, depending on the time zone you're in, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hope to tune in. Um, I did watch a bit of the North American one, and you know, I was really impressed with the fact that there was a lot of people actually benching. Um, you know, at, sometimes at these workshops, you get people that are just there to to learn, but then they are afraid to actually do something. So, hopefully, you will have a lot more um, participation in the European one. Yeah, yeah. In the workshop uh, in America, it works. Uh we were quite surprised of, um, like you said, people that were benching. A lot of people um, came. At some point, we had a waiting list, uh, like almost like a waiting room, like at the doctor, you know, waiting to, to have their turn for the workshop. <laughs> so, lots of yeah. people for the for the workshop just to listen, you know. And then they had uh, something like a few 15 minutes of hands-on the system to uh, to try by themselves, and then they had 30 minutes to compete. And most of the guys that did the workshop also competed. So, yeah, yeah. pretty cool. It was fun because at the same time, and that's the same thing you're going to see in Europe at the Gamers Assembly, uh, you can have uh, the pro guys, uh, actually we call that the pro guys, but it's the extreme guys uh, using liquid nitrogen. And at the same time, you can try by yourself on the computer that is not yours, that you don't have any risk to break at any point uh, in air cooling or water cooling, depending on the, which is the configuration we're going to have. Um, so don't forget, guys, if you're in uh, France during Eastern weekend, that's going to be in the Poitiers at the Gamers Assembly, the biggest land party in France. And uh, it's open to anyone. Uh, that's good to know. Uh, all the gamers, All the gamers can come for the workshop. And all the, all the visitors, uh, although if you have a visitor, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to ask. It's not just also the gamers. If you come, if you come to uh, to gamers assembly as a visitor, you can also participate. And also, if you are overclocking with us, you also get a LAN cable on your desk, so you can actually play the game as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for the validation online. Only for that. If you suck at overclocking, you can still play games. <laughs> Um, what is your best uh, was uh, what is the best you expect from that, Timote? Uh, what, what do you have something special in uh, that you're waiting for it, or you, that's gonna be like completely random and you just hope that something big gonna happen, or maybe I don't uh, know, like a flying chicken. Yeah, what, what is going to be very cool, for instance, is uh, so we have, you know the gamers assembly they have this tradition. I don't know, not so many land party have that because much of the land party are either too big or too small. But the, the, the Gamers Assembly is very a very social event. That's a place where people usually go and meet and make new friends. And they have every day, every time at the very beginning, before everyone starts playing, they have the opening ceremony, they call it. So that's on the Saturday morning. And um, so every, every participant uh, as a, that has a booth there is going to go on stage and pretty much introduce to... Uh, the whole, like almost like a stadium of people, uh, what is going on, and we are going to be there to present uh, what's going on, the overclocking thing, and tell people, you know, uh, what we're going to do and what they can do and what they can win if they participate in the competitions. And I, I and I'm expecting this moment to be super exciting, and maybe hopefully we can even after that at the end get the winners of the competition up on the stage, and that will be super epic. I can't wait for that. Uh, Dennis, what are you, your uh, expectations regarding the stream? Um, I would really like to see some on-screen stuff, you know, um, as the person is overclocking, you know, seeing what they're tweaking, what they're tuning, and 
actually see if they're successful in the benchmark. It would be um, really interesting to see, especially if they had just, you know, sat down cold from the workshop and see what their first reaction was to the system. Great. I, um, I'm pretty sure we're going to have something uh, interesting about that, especially with the number it's of... It's a people. blue screen! <laughs> and it's a blue screen! <laughs> yeah, for the people that didn't watch the North America final of the... Uh, of the amateur, you should watch uh, an Eastern weekend for the live. That's going to be uh, interesting to see uh, how that <laughs> turned out. Um, we'd like to thank uh, Droid Insanity. Is actually, uh, don't forget, we're taking questions on the live chat of Twitch on the Overclocking TV channel. Uh, Droid Insanity says, I, I bought a 5820K CPU the other day because you guys tempted me so much and I wanted something else to overclock. Well, uh, glad we. Uh, made you uh, get a new hardware to play with, and we hope that uh, you can assume it's some uh, good scores for that. Uh, so we hope to see you at the next event, Strange and Sanity. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, thank you guys for uh, joining here on Twitch. We are the OC Show. That's the episode 5 of the season 2. And we are discussing about everything going on in the overclocking world, as well as overclocking news and competitions. Um, Timothy, do you have anything to add about the World Tour in Europe? Um, nothing else for the moment besides uh, to um, if some guys were interested but are not too sure of how to get there, Poitiers is super easy to access. I mean, it's uh, it's two hours by high speed train from Paris. So actually, no matter where you live in Europe, just take a flight to Paris, which usually is pretty cheap, and then just take a train ride to Poitiers, which is I think something like uh, maybe a, a hundred, hundred, a hundred twenty bucks return if you if you're like. A, yeah, if you take it, the tickets now or something like that. But yeah, so it's very easy to get there. They have also, if you don't want to pay for accommodation, there's a whole uh, dormitory in a, like in a in a big sports hall which you can sleep there for ten bucks for the three days. So I mean, like, there's no excuse to not get there. And we're gonna have approximately three thousand liters of liquid nitrogen. We have three trucks that are going to come. <laughs> so, so, so so wait. There is not enough tank to store, so we have the trucks directly. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 we, they, I mean, like we, we asked all the big, uh, manufacturers of uh, liquid ni or, or cryogenic gases in uh, in France and Europe. So you, we asked Linda Gas, Air Liquid, and uh, none don't, of don't them say actually. Names. Don't say names. <laughs> uh, Anyway, it's actually, we pretty much asked all of them. None of them had actually, you know, usually we, we use those uh, vertical uh, cylindrical the, uh, like uh, tanks, you know. They're also called Rangers uh, sometimes. And, and none of them could provide like 20 or 30 of them. And non, no one had also enough 450 liters tanks that we could get in for the event. So it always was a solution of either having a big 4,000 liter tank, which was costing a huge amount of you know shipping. They had to come with a crane to move it up the truck. Uh, impossible. So we, we got a uh, provider that comes with three smaller trucks, but like, you know, those big van trucks with 1,000 liter tanks in there. So we're going to park all three right in front of the door where we have the overclocking thing. So we can basically just have to go out with the water field from the truck, go straight back in. So it's going to be quite epic. <laughs> I can't wait for it. Great. Yeah. Uh, You're going to have to post a picture of that, that's for sure. Yeah, we will yeah, have yeah, pictures yeah. and we'll have videos for <laughs> sure for that, for sure. Um, next topic, the ASUS Republic of Gamer Camp in Germany. Um, ASUS is hosting some qualifier at the moment. I'm not sure it's still going on. Uh, that's yes, and, uh, going, yeah. and, there, and there's going to be like eight people that's going to be selected from that qualifiers to go and uh, train themselves on liquid nitrogen. And that's going to be hosted by uh, PC Games Hardware Extreme and uh, Der Bauer. That's called the ROG Camp in Germany. Uh, Timothy? ROG. So um, ASUS in Germany is uh, quite um, renowned, I would say, in Europe for being quite active, uh, as well as the, the Russian region to uh, to do events and try to do something every time with overclocking. And um, so this year um, they are hosting what they call, like you said, a ROG camp, and they have qualifiers right now. So it's open from March first to March the thirty first. Uh, thirty first, yeah. And um, so eight days left, and uh, in there it's open for overclockers from Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. So basically, people that either learn German at school or have it as a like first language, or you know, all those countries are in the same region pretty much. 
And um, so those guys, they can all qualify. It doesn't matter which website you come from. In the past, we've seen competitions that were restricted to specific communities or one participant per tech site. So this one is open to everyone. There's no limitation. And basically, the, the eight top guys from this qualifier will be uh, invited to uh, Nuremberg. So that's a city in the south of Germany. And um, very historical city, actually, if you're interested in um, all that kind of history stuff of Europe. And um, so they will be hosting their a camp where basically on the first day they, um, they are going to have Roman and Tom Laske from, P from PC Games Hardware to explain um, how you have to insulate your board, uh, this, uh, what a container is, how to mount it properly, you know, uh, make sure you have the, the, the thermal compound properly installed, what kind of compound you should use, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, how to monitor your temperatures, and basically how to bench with liquid nitrogen. So those people that come there, they already know about overclocking. They know enough to actually qualify in a competition where there's already 28 people participating. And then on the second day, well, they are all by themselves, and they compete just like, uh, you know, MOA style or whatever other, other competitions. So it's just uh, everyone versus everyone in a big competition and may the best win. <laughs> Well, uh, there, there was some question on the live chat, and I was actually answering that. But the uh, just to make a, a, a side note, Mike Fee was asking uh, what kind of graphic card he should uh, get for his newly built uh, PC. Uh, actually, it was a 970 or 960 or a 290X. Uh, I would say 970, and if if, if it is uh, a matter of price, you can take the 960. But yeah, back to the back to the ROG camp. Um, you're gonna be attending the event, Timote. Uh, I'm gonna try to get there. I know um, so Peter from uh, HWBot is going there to uh, run the competition, you know, like uh, taking the scores and put them online so people can see uh, what's going on and post the rankings and everything. So uh, I w since I would be in Europe, I will, there's a very big chance I'm gonna pass by. I'm still uh, checking with the organizers if we can do a stream there, if it's possible, you know, if there's internet and all that kind of stuff. So we might even stream, you know, who knows? Who knows? Sometimes. <laughs> Um, don't forget, guys. There is eight days left uh, if you want to. Yeah, eight days to qualify. Yeah, yeah. to qualify for that. Uh, if you live in uh, Germany or any any nearby, you can uh, just qualify and uh, make sure that you can uh, get trained on liquid nitrogen. Uh, that's uh, gonna be um, uh, provided by Der Bauer, although at the same times. I think we just lost one of the guy, but that's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just lost your video, Timote. It's okay. Ah, my team. Ah, it's coming back probably. You know, it's my Skype. It's kind of like sometimes it wants, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, back just a second. <laughs> um, hey, the Aru and you're back. The ROG yeah. camp will be uh, held the weekend after the Gamer Assembly, so that's gonna be like two weekend in a row full of overclocking madness. Um, I will take the opportunity about uh, we were talking about Der Bauer uh, 8ECC. Um, he actually released one of his new CPU pods uh, earlier uh, today. Pretty uh, amazing pods. Yeah, actually, I can show some of the pictures to uh, the yeah. audience. So basically, he shared uh, during the weekend some shots of his new design, uh, which is uh, quite amazing. It's like, I mean, like. I haven't seen anything like this so far. You, we've seen all sorts of pots, you know, we've seen some crazy stuff that was 60 centimeter high, we've seen some much smaller things, you know, and those pots, I mean, they have, they, there's holes, drills everywhere inside. I don't even know how some of the stuff must be like a technical challenge. There's uh, even some holes that are drilled from the side, you know, so it's like, a, well, like you can see on the, on the stream, you know, so it's, it's really amazing. I don't know, Dennis, what do you think of that, but I would love to have one of those. Actually, um, I talked with Roman about this container, and um, you know those holes that are on the side is mostly access for the the machine tool to get in there, so that mm. they can cut holes in between the uh, the vertical um, exhaust yeah. pipes. Well, and then there's cover plates that go on it that kind of you know you can put his logo on there and stuff like that. The the thing that interests me the most about this container is that one, it's big. He calls it the beast because it's, it, it's big. It's huge. <laughs> but um, it's the typically in an LN2 container, the very bottom of it has kind of a, a texture. You know, it's either holes drilled down or um, a rough texture of some sort to allow the thermal thermals to actually 
conduct heat. Yeah. And in his design, which is something that you don't see that I saw when I got to see the drawings, there's just a few dimples in the very, very bottom. So most of the evaporation happens along the outside edge of this container. I'm interested mm -hmm. to see how that's actually going to handle heat because, um, as we know, the, you know, the CPU is the, the point where the heat is that you're trying to remove. Um, with this, most of the, the mass, the cold mass, is going to be on the outside of the container instead of on right above the CPU. So. Yeah, so but maybe the, since the mass is yeah, since the mass is slow, it might be a very fast pot. That's that what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Um, he's going to let me know when they go up on sale, so I can actually try to get myself a uh, another beast because I have one of his version one beast pots already. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, Der Bauer has been making some uh, CPU pot like this for a while, and um, he. It's not yet on sales for this one, but it did announce mm. that, and everyone was like, "Holy, dude, what's going on with that?" It's it's yeah, actually well, that's insane. It, you know, yeah, in the in the in the pot manufacturing industry, I mean, like for those that are joining right now, we are not talking about drugs; we are talking about computer hardware. Um, so for for the for the for the for those parts, um, I mean, like it's. There's not that much new stuff coming up usually, right? I mean, like the last time it was pretty active in the releases of, uh, you know, of new designs and things like that was probably uh, the time when uh, when Kingpin came up with um, the different uh, the variations of pots he has right now, like the Denon and all that stuff. And since then, like all the other pots, even uh, yeah, even the pots Roman had before was very. They all had a kind of a similar thing, like you were mentioning, uh, just vertical drills, right? And I guess this one is yeah something completely new on both technological and also I guess design as well. I really like the ionized stuff everywhere. Epic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the price gonna be epic. It didn't release any uh, information on the pricing yet. Uh, it said it's gonna stay in the three digits, but yeah, that could go from hundred to nine hundred ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no. the the original beast, the version one was um, almost four hundred euros. So yes. it's going to probably be north of that. Well, it's also the, the copper base on the these parts is much more important. And so I guess you pay for the price of the copper, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, with the euro falling down, I guess, uh, you know, everything goes up in terms of euro figures. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I can't wait to see it performing under uh, some cold and some very uh, strong CPUs like the the latest one on the uh, X99 uh, platform, that could be actually a good uh, a good way of thinking that. Maybe we're going to see it at the Agilbert World Tour in Europe. Uh, yeah, I talked to him already on the... <laughs> as soon as he posted the pictures, I, I, I commented, you know, and like uh, he replied like, yeah, of course, you know, like for sure. And you guys, you can, uh, can be sure, since Roman would be attending, on the stream of the gamers assembly, if you want to like see one of those parts being used or having Roman on the stream explaining how he actually manufactured it, you know, maybe give some more insights on how this part was made, you know, I mean, like you really guys, you, you're going to have to tune in to see that. It's going to be pretty, pretty epic. We're going to try to arrange that interview so the American guys can also tune in at the right time. <laughs> we will have uh, plenty of time to, uh, to put some, uh, some content on. Um, so that was about the ROG camp. Uh, do we have some questions on the live chat? Don't forget, guys, we're live right now. You can ask us any questions on the live chat that is related to uh, this OC show. Uh, there was a question from your man, mate. Uh, what is this game? That's something we uh, usually have a lot when we're uh, streaming on Twitch. Uh, the game is to push your hardware to the maximum you can. And when I say the maximum, it's the maximum. If it's too hot, cool it down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we play with uh, benchmark scores pretty much. So, like people that play to go faster, well, we go faster, and we what we measure is the score we get in the in the benchmark. So, we actually, for some reason, we don't use much benchmarks that are game benchmarks. We use like uh, benchmarks that have nothing to do with what people usually do on computers. <laughs> 
besides you know but i i don't know why you know it's very weird but yeah i mean like uh, we use really marks or the whole different benchmarks that those guys have we use some stuff called super pi we have some stuff called w prime maybe some here that's cinebench if you are doing like a uh, 3d rendering for your work or something like that so yeah we use all those kinds of things to measure the performance we tweak our tweak our hardware get higher compete on the score and pretty much do drag racing with our PCs. <laughs> uh, there's another question from Druid Insanity, that is a regular uh, uh, guest here. Uh, the question is, for someone who wants to do extreme over overclocking or extreme cooling, what would you recommend that they should get to start out and uh, would be a necessity? So first of all, you need to uh, first get the, the, the hardware you want to play with. Uh, you can use any hardware you want. Uh, if it's your very first time on liquid nitrogen, I would suggest that you don't go and use your X99 platform. <laughs> but try on the... Yeah, on use the, something cheaper. Maybe. Yeah, something <laughs> cheaper maybe that if something happened, like condensation issues and stuff like this, that uh, you, you always run into it. Um, so you can get like a, the D3250A just to play out with it and just uh, make your hand on that. On that. And uh, you need to get uh, dry ice. That's like minus 78 degrees if you want to use that for the for first time. Or you can uh, uh, use liquid nitrogen. But I would strongly suggest that you find someone that is close to you and that already have experience with that. They, and so they can give you like all the information, details, uh, making sure that... Uh, uh, you use it the right way and uh, don't forget it's not a toy it's just a tool um, yeah. what else could you have you need a CPU part if you want to play with the CPU you need a GPU part if you want to play with the graphic cards but so far just use the CPU part when you start and um, look online for installation guide uh, I know that overclocking.guide uh, the website of uh, actually Roman is uh, uh, managing that one uh, you have a lot of uh, information on how to insulate your your hardware yeah. and make sure that you can um, you can avoid the condensations. Two things sure. to keep in mind: LN2 is not a toy; it's a tool. And the second thing is condensation is a bitch; it's your worst enemy. <laughs> avoid <Yeah>. condensation <laughs> at all costs, and avoid having water pouring on the mainboard because that's usually when uh, you have uh, issues. And sometimes when it doesn't work, just stop everything, dry everything, and start again. Yeah, well, usually you can have it. drops of water slipping on the components. That's usually where you don't see anything, but it's there, you know. So <laughs> just a not. Take your time. Take your time. So I think that would be my very first recommendation. Take your time. And yeah. don't don't forget, don't hesitate to ask. I mean, it's it's a community thing, so you can always ask and have people to, to help you run. Yes, Denise, you wanted to add something? Oh, yeah. So I was going to say that um, you could do a semi-extreme overclock as well. If you have a, um, a, a build-yourself style water cooling loop, you can take your radiator and dump it into a, um, uh, a cooler. And then you can go down and get some dry ice, fill the cooler with dry ice, and have your fans basically pull cold, dry iced air through the radiator. That will bring your uh, water temp down to below ambient, almost to zero degrees uh, centigrade. And then you got a super cooled system. Yeah, yeah. Usually, all those homemade loops are indeed a great way to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Uh, don't forget, guys. We are live right now on Twitch, and if you have any questions regarding overclocking or hardware in general, you can ask us on the live chat, and we're gonna answer that in uh, after the next topic. Next topic is the new overclocking competitions. There's one with legacy hardware, Timote. Yeah. Yeah. There's um. There's some cool stuff coming up, you know. So um, on OCD Sports, there was a, uh, it's not really a leak, it's just a, a teaser of a, of a picture, you know. And it, it looked like, some guys got it right, it looks like an old motherboard with some uh, ISA slots. Um, and that was back, back, back in the days. I mean, like, for people that are born after <laughs> the year 99 or something like this, they probably never knew any of the sports. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so um, this is coming up and it's going to be a competition about uh, old stuff. So, you know, at, uh, I started about there used to be uh, ch regular challenges on older hardware where people still had motherboards at home, but, you know, you don't really use them anymore because it's all crap anyway, but they're still, they're still really fun to bench on. And uh, so those competitions are back and they're back thanks to um, a big community push and there's... Um, 
a guy called Antinomy. Uh, I think he's a Russian, and um, so it's going to. Um, he has designed the whole competition. You know, all the different stages. What are the hardware limitations for this? And uh, yeah, it's gonna start on April first. It yeah, I prefer and it's not a full joke. Uh, Denise, we can see right now on the cam that you have some pretty old hardware that you keep in the, one of the closets at your place. Yeah, do you, do you think this is old enough? <laughs> <laughs> we will see. Uh, that, that might probably do, yes. I do That's actually have one here it. too. I do <laughs> actually have this one. <laughs> so Dennis, what board is that, the one you have? Oh, this one is, um, it's, a, it's called, um, well, it's a bunch of letters, but <laughs> it's a dual socket 370 from a company called Freeway Design. It was a, a back in the like the BP6 era, a bit BP6. There was um, you could do dual Celerons on a. Um, I can't even remember the name of the chipset now because it's quite old. Um, but this was a custom design that came out, and they basically stacked the CPU sockets vertically, and then I put um, a couple of Alpha coolers on there, and then some. 60 millimeter YS Tech fans. These are <laughs> 2.16 watt fans. Spin around 6,000 RPM. And um, yeah, I was able to get this particular board up to 160 megahertz base clock, or not base clock. Uh, uh, FSB, at the, FSB at this time, yeah. FSB back then. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, so this box. this guy just has uh, the AGP Pro slot, so you could put professional graphics cards in there. Um, Onboard audio, kinda. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, a two printer. USBs, <laughs> two USB and a printer <laughs> port. And let me guess, yeah, so it was USB 1.0, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. If that, I guess. <laughs> hey, it was already 50 times faster than Serial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was the first motherboard I reviewed professionally, um, and. Uh, I've kept it around because it's actually a really good board. So you're so, gonna use that one if you can on the uh, on the competitions when that's gonna happen? Oh, I, I think so. I mean, I, I know basically what it will max out at in terms of frequency. It's like, what is it, 960 megahertz? So just shy of a gig. But that's across two processors, single core, so you get two threads, you know. Um, yeah, I don't think there's there's that many people having like two uh, two CPUs on the same main board for this kind of hardware because it's pretty old and at that time it was not that uh, that easy to do like the uh, like the multi CPU configuration. Yeah, it was very very new back then, and you know when Pentium four came out, it was still single core originally, but then they started doing dual core, and um, that was basically the start of multi core platform. Yeah. That's actually like a, a Pentium 4 I have right there on a very old uh, P4, P800 SE special editions or <laughs> slacker editions. I don't know which one it is, but yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's very old. <laughs> yeah, I do actually cool have... Stuff. I had one like this, too, but I didn't have the slacker edition. It was just a, the regular, <laughs> the, the regular one. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, we don't know yet the rules of the competitions. Uh, that's gonna be we we do see, we do guess that's gonna be on very old hardware, of course. Um, I would love to see some uh, some people trying to find out how they did that back in the days. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's gonna be mainboard with jumpers to overclock because now everything is in the BIOS. But back in the days, that was uh, all by end or modification. Um, Dennis, actually, yeah. how do you think uh, it's cool to 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 all to overclock this uh, old hardware, or you think it's like, kind of tricky? It, it's a bit tricky, it, but it also depends on when you started in your enthusiast hardware, you know, world or whatever. Um, I can't remember that word. <laughs> so you know, if you were uh, working with like a K six two system, that was an old AMD those motherboards had jumpers on there and then you could arbitrarily overclock the CPU by tricking the motherboard into thinking it was a different CPU. And then I found that you could get a mobile version of the K6 and put that on a desktop board and overclock it to a speed that was not available from AMD. And it was all based off of the multiplier. Um, you know, there's a, a challenge associated with overclocking this old hardware and part of it is just finding it. Unless you have it in a closet like what I do, you're going to be searching eBay to try to find um, 
you know, the perfect motherboard that someone happens to want to get rid of. And then you have to find a cooler that will fit. And a lot of times the only ones you can find are the OEM coolers. And those are not really going to get you much in terms of an OC. And then put an, um, an LN2 container on a CPU might actually be not um, beneficial. It might <laughs> get too cold and then you have a cold bug at <laughs> negative two degrees centigrade or something like that. You know, and yeah. but there's... Um, one of the things that uh, could get you a lot of points on the hardware bot engine was benching old Celeron processors on the LGA 775 platform. There's some of those. those were super popular, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of points available, but these are also the CPUs that could hit, you know, global world records of like seven gigahertz. So it's um, it's all in a matter of how you uh, attack the problem and what hardware you have available and what hardware you can acquire yeah that's uh, that's gonna be uh, like the ebay uh, the ebay run on trying to get uh, everything that you can uh, i do actually for the the p4 p800 i have right here i do actually bought it on uh, on ebay and the uh, kg because on ebay i could not find the uh, the agp card i was looking for i was looking for mm -hmm. a geforce 4 if uh, some of the guests remember that one that was a very uh, powerful and special one at the time and uh, yeah, I had to, to look around on some, some different website to uh, actually find the board and the VGA. But I had a lot of CPU here that I can use. Oh, you have, an, yeah. uh, you have another old one. <laughs> yeah, I well, think the, the recycling was, business um, killed you. <laughs> yeah. in, in chat, Stepanzi was talking about how he had 20 CPUs and he hadn't touched them yet. Well, that board that I held up was the, the Black Ops from Foxconn, and that's one of the the go-to boards when you want to overclock a 775. So, Quite I, uh, I very famous back then. Yeah, well, it's got a water-cooled north bridge and everything. So, um, I really need to get a hold of that Celeron action and see if I can get myself a 7G out of it. Step on, you found yourself a buyer. <laughs> 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 I take them all. <laughs> It's kind of like, it's not even a gray market or a black market, just like the whole hardware market. And it's like, oh, okay, I have this many, I have a lot of um, circuit uh, 478 CPUs that I don't use. And actually why I bought the, the board, but I have like sometimes five times the same reference. So it's like, oh, okay. Uh, I think that was like three weeks ago. Some guys on Facebook like, hey, do you have some old CPU? Yeah, sure. You want some? 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Take them all. Yeah, well, like I think it's better that you sell them that way than sell them to somebody trying to get gold off of them. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's sure. uh, it's sad to see them dying. Anyway, <laughs> um, Timothy, do you have more information about the competitions yeah. right now? Can you share that? Or actually, it's yes. Under I, I, sh I shared to you a link, truth, and uh, uh, so that that link is actually already public, so you can um, pick it up. It's in the the that Google Docs file. And it's actually the link to the competition. So if you guys are curious to know more about it, uh, there's not everything in there yet, but there's already the two stages uh, rolled up. So there's a 3D Mark 3 stage and a SuperPi 1M stage. Uh, competition starting on April 1st, we already said, until May 31. And um, so the competition is called Old School is Best School. And this seems to be going to be a series of competitions because uh, so it's not going to be one this is the round one they're going to be round two round three round four just like the rookie rumble or the novice nimble so if you go to the ocesports.com website and you have that series menu and you scroll down you have a old school is best school menu button and that's where you find that competition so we got Sorry. more information right now that that's not going to be a one-time competitions but a long competitions then yeah, it's going to be hopefully forever. I think uh, people missed a lot that kind of competition and contests. So it's going to be yeah, something that is going to stay. As long as people participate and have fun doing it, it's going to be there. Interesting. They say the hardware limited to GeForce 5 maximum and circuit 478 and circuit 939. So that's definitely what we have right now. Uh, <laughs> and that's going to be interesting to see um, who was holding that kind of hardware back in uh, in his closet somewhere and says, oh, maybe one day they're going to use it. Well, yeah, now is it. the day. 
Well, I think the prices on eBay are going to surge once more. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the time to go to your parents and steal the old computer if they never touch it for the past 10 years. <laughs> Uh, just, just tell them you replace it with something called an i3 or a Pentium CPU. <laughs> <laughs> you it should be very fine with that. <laughs> your, your biggest trouble will be pro transferring the content of their of their IDE hard drive onto <laughs> something with SATA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dennis, do you plan to compete in this one? Um, I am looking into it, but. It will really be based off of time. So if I have some time to be able to throw down some scores, you know, I'm, I'll surely put something in. But uh, I didn't get to see the link until just actually just now. So I'll have to read through and find out what the requirements are and if my old hardware is old enough or new enough to actually be able to compete. Great. Uh, I'm sure I have some. Yeah, I, I'm, sure. I'm pretty sure you're gonna have you're gonna try at least once just to make sure, like, oh yeah, it's still working. It's still working after that <laughs> many times. <laughs> yep. But the hardest issue with those boards is to boot because uh, if you don't have any more optical drive, you got have, you have a hard time installing Windows. That's actually with. the issue I have here. I have <laughs> I have all the systems, but I don't have the uh, optical hard drive. I just uh, install Windows by USB now for for quite some times now, and it's like, oh, oh, I don't have any CD player. Oh, wait, I don't have any. CD player writer, so it's like, oh damn it, there's no way I can make these things work now. So I'm just gonna have to find a way to make sure I can make it work. But well, that's gonna be challenging for a lot of people, I think. So yeah. don't forget, yeah. guys, old school is the best school round one. That's gonna be from April 1st to uh, 31 of May. So I'm pretty sure that some of the guys going to the Gamers Assembly, the HWBot World Tour Europe, gonna bring some old hardware to uh, maybe compete in that competition for, for some fun. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised we see people like uh, there's this guy called Bob Le Magnifique in France. Uh, he uh, he also happens to work at Corsair France, and um, he's a big fan of the 775 stuff. And he has trays and trays of CPUs. He buys them all, all of them. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I wouldn't be surprised that the, he has a booth uh, for Corsair at the Gamers Assembly, but I'm pretty sure he will be swinging by at some point. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun um, thank you guys for joining in on the Twitch uh, live chat we are at the OC show episode 5 of the season 2 that's the live Q&A so if you have any questions just go on the live chat and we're gonna answer you during the show or right after the show uh, welcome to bwalker255 um, he says hello guys and hello to you <laughs> so next topic, the new over new overclocking competitions. Um, we just talked about the uh, old school is the best school, uh, but there's a new one with the the M way, the master overclocking arena. Yeah. Um, what's special about this uh, M O A announcement this time? Well, you know, M O A is that competition from M S I that usually takes place in October, and the format is such as you have three months with qualifier where you have different regions in the world, plus a, a B-series qualifier for the whole world with a lower-end hardware. And then you have finals in Taipei in October where it's something like 18 versus 18 kind of competition. That's usually the format. That's uh, what is known as the regular master overclocking arena by MSI. And um, so this year, they announced, uh, actually last week, that they would be doing a competition uh, for... Computex, so you can win two seats uh, for the Computex, and that competition is called uh, the MOA Master, uh, the Master Series something. Extreme, Sorry. the MSI MOA 2015 Extreme Master Series. That's a long. So it's a mix of uh, Master, Extreme, it's and series and MOA. So I'm not too sure exactly what is going to be the connection with what we used to know as the MOA here. Um, there's MOA in the name, but the structure for now doesn't look like MOA. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see what they are doing with it and what exactly the guys that are going to win are going to do on Computex. You know, it's like uh, we're throwing before the show some ideas that it would be great that they have a face up on stage, you know, and one of the winners. Uh, wins on the trade show gets a golden ticket to the actual MOA finals if they still happen in October. You know, something like this. There's a lot of things uh, MSI can still do around that, and I think they chose the title to 
keep the options as much open as possible. So these competitions, uh, it's branded as the MOA, the Master of Blocking Arena. That used to be for the people that just joined in because the, there were some questions. Um, that's uh, happening only at the end of the year, of the year with qualification online during the year. But this time MSI is uh, doing the Extreme Master Series. And if you win the competitions, actually the two first guys go to Computex, like they pay the trip to Computex. So you can just yeah. go to Computex, you're going to be on the MSI booth, you're going to have liquid nitrogen on display and stuff like this. So yeah. that's actually interesting to see who's going to compete in that, uh, because I know that in the past, that was only uh, by invitations that you can go on the booth. Uh, we saw some of the um, world be known of uh such as uh, PT1T from Belgium. Uh, we also saw Pepinorang that is actually now uh, was working for, uh, for MSI. And uh, we saw some of the uh, Jagat review guys from Indonesia, um, Alva and some of the uh, office of fellas from Indonesia being overclocking uh, on, yeah, uh, on the, the show. Yeah. Tim? That's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know, Dennis, uh, do you plan to participate? Because I know you participated in MMOA last year for the qualifiers. So. Yeah, well, I, I tried to qualify for the past three years or something like that. Um, and I actually did quite well. You know, I would, um, you know, at least in the top 10 in the U.S. Yeah. Um, Stepanzi, who's actually on, did really well last year. Um, the I was looking at this competition, and it's basically Z97 and X99 in terms of the hardware that you're going to need to have. And the benchmarks are such that you're going to need both platforms to be competitive. So that is... Um, I have processors for those, but I don't have the MSI versions of the motherboards. So that might actually hinder me a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try. I mean, it starts April 1st, so I have, what, a week to go and acquire hardware? So. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, if you think about it, it's very similar. Uh, so Gigabyte is also doing a competition, the Big XU one, where you can win uh, so also a ticket to uh, Computex. And there again, you also uh, you also need to have all the different uh, Gigabyte platform motherboards. So the same like MSI, you need a different MSI platform motherboards to compete in all the different stages to be able to win your trip. So it's quite, a, it's quite an investment if you don't have to, to maybe miss one of the boards or don't have the board or maybe you need to buy an extra CPU or something. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing to mention, although that uh, these competitions start on April 1st and finish on April the 30th, uh, but the stage close at different time. Um, so the first stage that is Superbuy 32M, they're going to close on the April 16th, uh, while the second stage going to close on the um, April 23rd, and the last one is like 30 Mark Fire Strike that's going to end up in April 30th. Um, so that competition is going to be like a tight one. Um, that's going to be like one month. The, the competition is going to end up one month before the Computex. So I think that's going to be um, crazy to see like, the guys taking the, the plane tickets last minute to to go from where, yeah. wherever they live to go directly to uh, to Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, don't forget, oh, yeah. guys, if you want to participate, there's also some lucky draw and, um, and uh, there's hardware until the fifth place. So there's a lot of chance to, to win something at least in competing in that one. Yeah, a lot of overclockers will come to, to Computex this year. There's going to be all the, all the qualified guys for the G-Scale competition, the OC World Cup. It's going to be uh, so two guys from MSI, one, one guy that comes to the Gigabyte competition, um, plus the other guys that just are regulars to the Computex trade show, so that are either coming there because they also work in the, in the tech press or any related fields, so plus the overclockers that also work for the manufacturers themselves, so we can expect, I suppose, also quite a lot of people. Great. Um, I actually, I just want, maybe I will try to, to see if I can compete in that one, just to know if I, uh, if maybe there is a way for me to get my, my trip paid to go to Computex this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, well, won't, I, I won't be able to, to reach the, the, the second, but the matter <laughs> is not to win, but to participate. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the, the one thing that um, we didn't mention was that this is global. It's not regionalized like the qualifiers in the past. So it's top two in the world, not just top two in a certain region. Yes. So it, the competition is going to be pretty cool. fierce. Hello. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I kind of missed the sun for for a second, but that's fine. <laughs> um, as, yeah, as actually, as the, you hear us again. Yeah, <laughs> actually, as as you say, Dennis, uh, I think that I think that what you say that it's worldwide and not uh, per country or per um, continent based. Um, so the convention is um, going to be like tight, but I'm pretty sure that there's uh, a lot of uh, capabilities in making sure that uh, you at least get something. If it's not the trip to Computex, you're going to get the lucky draw or um, one of the the prize for the top scores. Um, thank you guys for joining on the live chat on Twitch. We are the OC show and it's the episode 5 of the second season. Uh, I want to say hi to Game on Lad and Sunny is a boss. Um, maybe he's a boss, maybe he's not. We don't know, but his name is <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> uh, Timote, what do you uh, what do you expect? Uh, you, you were talking a bit more about like, uh, oh, maybe that's the MOA, that's gonna be like a, a ticket to the final stuff like this. Um, we don't know yet what's gonna be the link between MOA and the Extreme Series, but uh, what would be your best wish? Well, like I say, that that will be my best wish is that. The two guys that are winning those, um, so that are first in that competition, um, yeah, get the, so they get their trip to Computex, and then something, something cool happens there. You know, it's not just you go to Computex and you can bench on the MSI booth. Um, that would be, uh, to my view, that would be maybe too too regular. You know, it would be like just ah, yeah, just some smoke on the booth. You know, but if you if you do it in a way that the two guys that qualify would have a like some kind of face off or some kind of of match or something, or maybe they could even have them take on amateurs on the on, on the MSI booth. You know, anything you could come up with, and just make some kind of way where you can rank those two guys, and then in the end, if they do the MOA this year in a similar fashion than the last year somehow, then the the guy could actually win a straight ticket to that, and that would be epic because he would be coming twice to Taipei, and winning on Computex in front of everybody. I would add to the pressure of that. It would be, I mean, it would be super, super cool. And I that think. would be like a, a good way for MSI to follow up on this uh, Master of Overclocking Arena thing because they are the longest running competition ever. So that's yeah. the only brand that uh, kept on doing it this way and is uh, better and better every year. And I think that if any other vendors want to catch up with what's going on at uh, the uh, the MOA, they're gonna have some. Uh, tough work to do and uh, to make sure they can uh, at least go to the same level as uh, MSA is, uh, is putting out for some times now. Yeah, for sure. The, the branding the branding of MOA is very strong, so I think it's important that, uh, that MOA doesn't turn into just something online, you know. There has to be live finals at it from MOA. It's not, it's not really MOA anymore, you know. It's just like, oh yeah, it's just another online competition where, you, you know, you can win something that is great, but where you t see the true value of uh, of overclocking, it's always live, you know, because at home, you know, you can always not hide behind your machine or anything, but, you know, it's it's online. It's like everything. It's the same in gaming. If you want to see uh, some huge matches and something epic and something that is really uh, has a true value for the audience, you have to have it live. There's just no other choice. And every sport is, is like this anyway. Uh, I think we lost Denise, but I was asking uh, about to ask him a question. Uh, because Dennis <laughs> used to be our host for uh, oh, and he just told us that he crashed his computer, so he's gonna be back in a minute. Actually, Dennis was uh, the host for the MOA for uh, for last year when we did the the live, and indeed having a live uh, live final, uh, it's something very special, and that's something that's been driving uh, people uh, together for for some uh, for years now. Uh, most of us know each other in the overclocking community because of the live competitions and uh, because of all this uh, gathering that did happen. So that's very um, important to, to keep. While we wait for Dennis to come back, we have a few questions on the uh, live chat of Twitch. The first one is from Devil's Blow Rick Show Stack 43. I think I didn't <laughs> any. Very well pronounced, Truth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did actually repeat in my head quite a few times before. Um, the question was, what do you consider the best website resource that could help me to learn properly overclocked and make sure my computer is running properly? Uh, well, you can go to hardwareasylum.com, uh, the website from uh, Dennis. You can uh, check online. Uh, pretty much there's no one resource for that. It's uh, although at some point um, a very a community thing. So get online. Uh, Go and go check out Rosalem, go check overclock.net, uh, go check cocotland.com. Uh, dot, uh, dot 
com if you are actually uh, speaking French. It depends on your language. Uh, if you're Indonesian, yeah, you can go to Jagat that, Review. Uh, yeah. OC Sports or any OC Sports. Site yeah. have some resources. The, the best for you is to actually um, look at the kind of motherboard and CPU you have. You type the name of the actually the, the, the chipset name. So if you, if you have like a Z97 mainboard and a Core i7, you can type like overclock Z97 and Core i7. And you can uh, end up on having a, a lot of uh, hour to for that. Uh, Overclocking.guide, uh, the website, although I have some uh, special um, tutorial up there that you can uh, use in uh, to understand how to overclock that. I hope that's gonna answer your question for that. Uh, of course, I'm talking about uh, making sure you overclock first on hair and water cooling before going for something more extreme like uh, liquid nitrogen and dry ice. Uh, <laughs> you can overclock anything, even your cell phone. So don't forget and don't instead give it a try. You will see that's fun and addictive. Hey, Dennis, uh, you're back. Um, I'm back. Um, it looks like my overclock 3960 is going to have to be... Uh, <laughs> Rule number one, never do a podcast on an overclocked machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, I, I just kind of made that up. I, I have no idea what happened, but yeah, something not good. <laughs> not good. Good screen of the death. Yeah. Well, uh, um... Timothy, do you have anything to add to the uh, MSI MOA competitions? Uh, no, that's about it. Unless some people have more questions about that, I think we can just move on. Great. <laughs> um, um, next topic, and actually that's going to be one of the last topic for today. Uh, translation of HW bot. What's going on with that, Timothy? Uh, how far are we? Is there uh, a new, a new uh, language for that? Before that, yeah. HWBot, for everyone that join us, HWBot is the league website. So that means it's the the website where all the scores go, uh, all the ranking are calculated. And that's also the website where you can find uh, news about what's going on in the overclocking community. Uh, you have the forums with a lot of uh, discussions going on. On uh, If you have an issue overclocking your CPU, you can just go to the forum of uh, HWBot.org and you will have some uh, help right there. Um, the thing is, HWBot is growing uh, fast and it's growing with a lot of new members uh, coming from different countries. Um, HWBot is not country-based at all, so you cannot say, oh, this website is the best if you live in France and stuff like this. Uh, it used to be all in English, but that's changing. So, Timothy, can you tell a bit more about uh, what's going on with uh, the new language? Yeah. So, the, the, the idea is to make HWBot more accessible to people that are either starting overclocking or that don't know too well how the website works. And usually the, the language is kind of a, a big barrier if you're not fluent at English or if you need Google Translate to find your way around the site or understand some of the stuff. Um, so the, the idea is to um, make, um, make it available in more languages, just as simple as that. And it actually takes quite a lot of work. There's uh, something like over 3,000 lines of text that needs to be translated. Uh, some lines are just a few sentences, some others are just a few words. It really depends on where it is in the website. But uh, right now there's 18 language, uh, languages in the work. And um, yeah, French and German are pretty much done. So everything started about uh, in around October last year. Uh, so the Chinese one is already up since, uh, since quite a while. But um, so there's a French and German coming up and this means it will be soon on test on the website for everyone to see. So we're going to have, we already have English for everyone. We already have Chinese in the past. So now we're going to have French and German, right? Yeah, that's it. So you're going to be able to um, simply go on the site and everything will be in the German or French. Uh, besides the news that those ones would still be in a in the original English language, because we don't have the back end to, to translate all that yet. But everything else, all the buttons, all the different uh, key names of the leagues or descriptions of how things work will be all translated. 
Great, and for all the guys that do join us right now and have uh, some um, that are trying to see how they can overclock, uh, that will also answer the question of uh, Devil Devil's Brew Rig Show Stick 43. Uh, you can go on the YouTube channel of Overclocking TV, so it's youtube.com forward slash overclocking TV in one word. And there's a lot of how to videos, how to run a benchmark, how to overclock your CPU, how to uh, create an account on HWBot, how to uh, change some of the settings on the HWBot, so go right there and you're gonna have a lot of information um, about uh, how to use your CPU, uh, CPU, VGA, whatever, like your computer hardware. Um, Timote, how many other languages are in the backend that are not yet finished but that will maybe come one day? Uh, so right now, once we remove the, those three, there's about 14, 14 languages left. So among those, we have uh, like coders for in the on the chat. Um, there's Indonesian that is on the way. Uh, there's a uh, Ukrainian. There's a uh, Polish. You have Italian. You have uh, Spanish. Uh, Spanish, which is almost done as well. It's reaching the end. Uh, you also have uh, Ukrainian. You have Farsi. You have. Um, I think you even have an Arabic one as well. It is a, a bit of everything, you know, so everyone can join the, the kind of translation program. It's it's not very hard as long as there's one person in the language that is motivated to take on the responsibility to do it, you know, make sure it kind of makes progress and recruit some other guys to help out, um, then it's fine by us, you know, there's uh, no limitation whatsoever, so, um, yeah. I kind of like it. Uh, actually, I'm showing on the on the live uh, some uh, previous translation progress that uh, you guys did publish. Um, important to think to, to to note is that all these work of translating the website, translating the all all the the contents you have is made by the community. So it's very important to uh, thanks all these guys uh, for the French one. I will start with that because I'm French and I like that. Uh, would like to thanks uh, Akane, Marine OC, Wizard T, Strategosan, and Sasha Forty Five. Uh, thank you guys. You did an awesome job for that, and you were the first to finish the translation in another language. Uh, there was although a lot of people working on the other language. Uh, Timote, if you have some people you want to uh, give a shout out, it's the time. Yes, yeah, so for for German we have a guy. His nickname is uh, Basco. Uh, so if you look it up on HDI, but you can find him. Uh, he's also um, working with uh, Dan Cup, which is also another very famous German overclocker. So Basco did a great job by nearly by himself translating the. The whole site within within two or three months, something like that. So really awesome job. Then we have a Saint 19, which um, which is very well known at CTV here because he used to um, be editor uh, in chief of the Spanish part of the website. Um, they are also got yeah some other guys uh, like Codes from Indonesia that is helping out with the translation. Uh, we have a. Um, yeah, we have people from everywhere. It's really hard to remember all the names, but really cool stuff. Like it's really, it was really uh, almost overwhelming at some point. So many people wanted to translate, and we had to set up the whole backend. Uh, so I think Truth, I, I gave you a link somewhere if you want to show what the backend looks like for the translation. But yep. so we we do everything in some Google in some Google Docs, <laughs> and it, it works pretty well actually because like this you can have the different revisions of what people change. You can have discussions of how you want to coordinate the different names and everything. You know, sometimes when you translate, you don't think about that, but like, how do you translate the uh, overclocker league in French, you know? Do you want to have it, uh, say, the, the league of the overclockers or spin it a different way around? Or do you want to keep it the name as a kind of a branding, you know? So you need all that kind of discussion. So we do use different colors to, um, to so people can agree on it, and once it's validated, then we push it to the, to the back end, and then we can test it live and see if every everything kind of makes sense in the context uh, context of the website. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite a lot of work actually. It, it's a it's a good thing that you guys are uh, are uh, trying to make it as. Um, no, I won't say pure, but as fidel as possible. So you you're making it to to make sure it fits uh, that it always makes the same sense in all the language. And I think that's uh, to, to I, I did some translation work in the past, and actually that was the 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 most difficult part of uh, the translation work for that. Yeah, it also has to uh, make sense in the the local culture. You know, 
um, the culture of overclocking that people have locally. I mean, the German people don't speak about overclocking the same way uh, French people will talk about it. They might not focus on the same words in the sentence. Some stuff might be more important than others. So when they translate it, it has to be from that German or that French point of view of overclocking. If not, it would not make you know it would not make sense. It has to really not sound like it has been translated. That the site should feel German, feel French when the French or German person goes on it. I do actually like the the, the way that um, it's it's always tricky to translate. Like as you say, like the name of the leagues, uh, especially because it, whatever is the language you are uh, speaking in or using your computer in, um, there's always an uh, a small part of English word that always goes through to your own language. Uh, like <laughs> we never say like fréquence de référence. We'll always say base clock. So even for there's a lot of uh, English words in what we say in our day-to-day -day, uh, basis for uh, for the overclocking. It's always tricky to, to, to translate after that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Dennis, do you speak any other languages? No, not um, not really. Uh, you know, being an American and of my particular generation, there was uh, a big push for everybody in the American regions to uh, speak English. So, <laughs> um, you know, I could have taken like a French class in high school or a Spanish class in high school, but you didn't learn really conversational sorts of uh, language. It was mostly like, oh, uh, C means yes and gato means cat, you know, stuff like that. Um, nothing that you could go to like Mexico and go and order a burrito yeah. or something like that so um <laughs> yeah I, well, you, uh, have, you guys have taco bell right <laughs> yeah we have taco bell we can do it there but so you know the um it's probably one of my biggest regrets was that i didn't learn spanish for instance you know my last name is garcia i get people mm. uh, <laughs> at some of the spanish restaurants in town that are actually you know of Mexican descent and say, hey, your last name's Garcia, and then they start rattling off something in Spanish. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, um, yeah, I'm pure English. You know, I know a little words here and there, like, you know, I know a few Chinese words. I know some French stuff. I know one Russian word, you know, stuff like that. So, so swear words in every language is. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, not really, but. <laughs> it, well, and, and the big problem with me is that, you know, somebody will tell me a word in another language and then I mentally, I always have to look it up to find out what exactly they told me because I don't want to go and repeat something that would be offensive for me to even say to somebody. So, um, yeah, and I would say, you know, anyone watching that uh, is got a young enough brain to learn another language, definitely do it. You know, pick one, learn it. To death then if you use it great if not it, you can add it to a resume yeah <laughs> i think my next one is going to be portuguese it's been two years i say gonna learn that language but well so far yeah, yeah actually the, the guys in brazil are translating in portuguese yeah so it's gonna come eventually <laughs> <laughs> uh last question timothy uh when do you think that all the translation will be achieved by the community i know it's a community uh, work uh, so it's like it's based on the free will of people to work on that but yeah, you have to think that it takes at least uh, three, four to five months to have a language completely finished from start to beginning, tested and implemented and pushed to the, to the, to the back end. So if you think that we are right now still adding more or less one language every month at least, well, it's probably never going to end. There's 200 and something languages in, <laughs> in the world. So if we do all of them, well, you know, there's still going to be quite a few months of translation. Great. Um, I think that's going to be the wrap up for today. It's been an hour and 13 minutes. We are live and we try to not go over the uh, one hour, 20 minutes mark. Um, uh, I would like to, to thank you guys. I would like to thank you, uh, Timothy, for being here from Taiwan early in the morning. I would like to thank you, Dennis, for being there one more time with <laughs> us on the OC show. You are uh, a regular guest here. Um, I hope yeah. that uh, you're going to have some uh, decent and fun doing your next podcast for the Hardware Asylum. Guys, if you haven't yeah. watched and uh, see if you haven't listened to the podcast, uh, the latest podcast on Hardware Asylum, go check it. There's some information about the uh, uh, big XTU thing and, uh, and so on. 
Smartwatches. Um, <laughs> smartwatches. Um, <laughs> Dennis, you were talking about uh, doing a special live podcast, maybe some days. Uh, do you have more information about that yet, or it's still in the project plan? Um, we were going to do it for the last recording session. Um, Darren, my podcast co-host, and I, we sit down um, once a month to actually record all of the episodes that will be going live that month. And we were going to broadcast that whole thing live on Twitch so that people could see the creative process in, in, um, in work. But uh, we had issues with the internet connection and decided, well, instead of messing with it, we're just going to record our normal show. That um, broadcasting live is actually going to be something that will become a regular thing, but um, probably not until maybe after Computex. Okay, so we're going to have some updates uh, in uh, in early June, so. Yep, that's what we're hoping for. Perfect. Well, me. We, me. <laughs> Are you, so you're coming to Computex, Dennis? I'm, it's, uh, it's planned. Um, it's all about kind of the, the money right now, so um, I don't have a ticket. but You can I'm, win two tickets in the MSI competition, I, so you can win one ticket win in the three. Gigabyte competition. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's three, three people that can get paid to go to Computex if they overclock the hell out of the hardware they have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, yeah, there's options, obviously. So, But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to be there. Computex should be epic this year. There's going to be a lot of overclocking. There'll be a lot of different events. There should be some new hardware being released. But um, if, uh, if history has told us anything, the announcements will happen a week before the show, and then we'll just get to see them at the show. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's recap all the topics we had in the OC show of today's. We talk about the Edge of World Tour 2015 in Europe. If you have any questions regarding any of these topics, just go ask them on the Twitch live chat and we're going to answer you uh, by text. Uh, we're going to stay a bit more after the, the show. Um, thank you, Denise, for posting the uh, link to the podcast. Uh, yep. You, uh, If you guys want to check it out, uh, go there and you can actually uh, ask some questions although at the, during the podcast in here if you want. Uh, second topic we talked today was the Asus Republic of Gamer Camp in Germany the week after the World Tour uh, 2015 in Europe. Uh, we talked about the new overtaking competitions, the legacy hardware, as well as the MSI MOA uh, Extreme Master Series to go to Computex. And we talk a bit about the translation work at HWBot. And once again, thank you guys from the community to work on that. It's uh, highly appreciated that it's uh, community uh, work. And thanks. If you have any question regarding all these topics that we did discuss today, you can have some answer if you watch the replay on YouTube on the Overclocking TV channel, as well as uh, you can ask us right now on the uh, live chat. And we're going to answer that in the next few minutes. Um, when going to be the next OC show, Timothée? Uh, so the OC show is shot every two weeks, so we released the last one previous week. Um, so the next episode is going to be shot next, uh, next Monday, and uh, we'll be airing somewhere right after that. During that time, we'll be on the plane to go to, um, to the Gamers Assembly in Europe. So while we're on the plane, you guys will watch that episode, and you guys will know everything about what's going on in Europe. So that's going to be interesting to have the the live, then a lot of shows going at the same time. That's going to be a very, uh, very crazy and buzzy week that we're going to have in the next few, uh, uh, in the next few coming weeks. Uh, I can't wait to, I can't wait to have that. That's very uh, entertaining for all of us to, to, to do this. Um, there should be a, a special Q&A, of course. Yeah, we'll probably try to uh, make it straight from the Gamers Assembly itself. So... Uh, because uh, the the way it works at the game of the assembly is that um, so it's uh, three days, but it's almost four. So people arrive on Friday, Saturday will be qualifiers for the World Series. Sunday, same with the finals in the evening, and Monday will be more like a chill out uh, kind of a weekend benching thing. So I guess we will shoot the LC show on that afternoon. So it would be afternoon Europe time. So it will be yeah quite quite during the night for the the people on the US side of things, but. There will be the replay, and since there will be a lot of people connected to the European one, it makes more sense to do it at this time. I'm pretty sure that's going to be awesome to uh, to see. 
Don't forget, guys, uh, if you like the show, you can follow it on Facebook, uh, The OC Show. You can look at the link, The Overclocking Show. Uh, you can also find us on SoundCloud uh, because now we are having the um, special voice only things that you can have on SoundCloud. If you like uh, Overclocking TV, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, pretty much everywhere you want. Uh, here on Twitch, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to the button right down there. Uh, so that way you're gonna know next time the OC show is live and although you're gonna get the uh, informations by email when we go live and talk about all the overclocking things happening in the world. Uh, thank you, Denis. Um, if we want to find you, we can find you on uh, Facebook and Twitter as well at uh, Hardware Asylum. Yes, uh, we can Hardware find you yeah. Hardware Asylum. Dot com. And we can find the podcast at forward slash podcast. Uh, yes. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate having this. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's although Ali appreciated that some of the guys uh, were up all night and late in the night uh, from Spain, from Europe, or early in the morning from Indonesia. Uh, we do wish you guys a good day or a good night. And we see you guys in two weeks from now. Until then, keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. <laughs> Keep pushing it. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs>